As a pilot in today's all-weather air force, you should be thoroughly familiar with the technique of an instrument takeoff. Although actual instrument takeoffs are seldom required, precipitation, low ceilings, or night takeoff may make it necessary for you to go on instruments as soon as you leave the ground. Regardless of the type of aircraft, procedures are similar. As in any other takeoff, your first step is to line up the aircraft visually with the runway. Set the directional indicator under the top indices. This should be close to the runway heading. Check and adjust the attitude indicator as required for your type of aircraft. Hold your brakes and advance the throttle to the recommended pre-takeoff power setting. Check your engine instruments. Release the brakes, and if applicable to your aircraft, advance the power. During the takeoff roll, use steering control techniques which apply to your aircraft to maintain heading. Throughout the takeoff roll, the directional indicator is used for directional control. When the airspeed nears takeoff speed, acceleration error in the attitude indicator is approximately one bar width. So you adjust the pitch attitude as required for your aircraft to assume the takeoff attitude. When airborne, maintain this pitch attitude and use the attitude indicator to control both pitch and bank. As soon as the altimeter and vertical velocity show a stabilized rate of climb, retract your gear. At this time, control the bank attitude to maintain the desired heading on the directional indicator. When reaching the proper speed and altitude, the flaps are retracted. Heavy high-speed aircraft require a longer period of time to accelerate to climb airspeed. Therefore, it is the acceleration time element which produces this predominant error in the attitude indicator. This error causes the horizon bar to move downward. Since it is precessing downward anywhere from three to five bar width, and should your cross check be slow, you receive an indication of an extremely nose high attitude. If you fly by attitude indicator alone, and nose down to get back to your original indication, you will begin to lose altitude. This will build up your airspeed and cause further acceleration error in the attitude indicator. Although you think you have gone into a nose high attitude, actually you are nose low. Following the deceptive indication caused by this error, you again nose down in an attempt to hold the same attitude. And before you realize it, you may become a statistic. <laughs> the 
Now let's go back to that point where the flaps are retracted. An acceleration error in the attitude indicator becomes increasingly pronounced. The only way you can recognize this acceleration error is by cross-checking your vertical velocity indicator. It will tell you when a pitch change is to be made on the attitude indicator. Control the pitch attitude to maintain a definite rate of climb. The climb rate shown here applies to this aircraft only. Adjust these figures as required by your particular aircraft to give a reasonable rate of increase in the airspeed. As you reach your climb airspeed, reduce power as required to the desired setting. The airspeed indicator will determine the required pitch changes for the rest of the climb. When you reach your lead point, which is normally 10% of your vertical velocity, level off. Good instrument takeoffs, therefore, depend on how you interpret and cross-check your instrument. Another important technique you must know is how to recover on instruments from an unusual attitude. In all weather flying, you might find yourself in one. Generally speaking, an unusual attitude is the result of a careless cross-check. But there can be a number of other reasons, such as turbulence, instrument failure, vertigo, or pilot confusion. There are two main types of unusual attitudes. Nose low, indicated by increasing airspeed, and nose high, which is indicated by a decreasing airspeed. Your recovery procedure will depend upon whether the attitude indicator is operating properly or not. First, let's consider the technique of recovery used when the attitude indicator is functioning properly. An immediate reference to the bank index pointer tells you what your bank attitude is. If it's on the right side, you are in a left bank. If it's on the left side, you are in a right bank. If the bank index pointer is anywhere in the lower half of the instrument case, you are in inverted flight. If you remember that the bank index pointer always points to the sky, and think of the fuselage dot as a canopy, you can see that the quickest way to get right side up is to raise your low wing rolling toward the bank index pointer. Your next step is to determine whether you are in a dive or a climb. Note the relationship between the miniature aircraft, the horizon bar, and the bank index pointer. In any diving situation, the horizon bar and bank index pointer are close together and never separated by the miniature aircraft. To confirm the dive, cross-check your other instrument. Airspeed shows an increase the altimeter, a loss of altitude, and the vertical velocity, a descent. To recover, start a roll to right side up, reduce power, and extend your drag devices if available. Then establish level flight on the attitude indicator. Begin a normal cross-check and raise your drag devices. Increase power when the airspeed is normal. 
In any climbing situation, the horizon bar and bank index pointer are far apart, and the miniature aircraft is always between them. You confirm the climb by cross-checking your other instruments. Airspeed shows a decrease. Altimeter, an increase. Vertical velocity shows a climb. To recover, add power and roll to bring the bank index pointer toward the nearest 90 degree bank index mark. Allow the nose to drop smoothly. Then re-establish a wings level, slightly nose low attitude. Next, assume level flight. Immediately after recovering, resume a normal cross check. Reduce power when the airspeed is back to normal. The partial panel type of recovery is used when the attitude indicator is malfunctioning. And in the case of vacuum type indicators, when the limits have been exceeded. Your first step is to find out if you're climbing or diving. So, check your airspeed. Vertical velocity. And altimeter. You see that you're climbing, so you adjust the power. Center the turn indicator and ease your nose down. Your nose will be passing through the horizon when the airspeed, altimeter, and at times the vertical velocity stop and reverse their trend. When this occurs, Continue your cross-check and trim the aircraft. There's an exception to this procedure, however. If you're in an extremely nose-high attitude, and you can tell this by a rapidly decreasing airspeed, maintain a turn of approximately standard rate until the nose reaches the horizon. Then center the turn indicator, cross-check, and trim. In a diving situation, reduce your power and extend the drag devices if available. Then center the turn indicator. Now raise your nose to correct pitch. When the instruments stop and reverse their trends, your nose is passing through the horizon. Cross-check. Retract your drag devices and trim. Instrument takeoffs and recovery from unusual attitudes bring into play the finer aspects of instrument interpretation. Master these techniques and you will continue flying. No one will say, you're an accident hurrying someplace to happen.